What's up? This is Rebel Radio. What up? What up? This is DJ Newmark. This is Peanut Butter Wolf. It's your boy. It's okay. Keep checking out Rebel Radio. Rebel Radio. This is Rebel Radio. We're in the place right here. Uh, Rebel Radio is going down. What do you say? Rebel Radio? Oh, wait. Let's do it again. Rebel Radio. Yo, what's up? It's Rebel Radio. We're back with our Artwork Rebel series in partnership with Gorilla One. Big shout out to Eddie from Gorilla One for bringing through our guest today, James Haunt. Really talented young artist, uh, kind of blending graffiti with like an 80s graphics vibe. I really like this guy's art and I love the stories that he comes in to tell us uh, about some little trouble with the police back in the day, some time in jail and actually running into a bit of police brutality which sort of turned a corner for his life and his career and uh, led him to build a, a successful streetwear and t-shirt business and then now doing work with with corporate brands like Red Bull, Porsche, that kind of thing. He's going to give us some great lessons from his journey, um, how he makes sure he's easy to work with and some insight into how he knows when to say no. Check out our interview now with James Hunt. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll just leave this one up top for Ernie as like a cool. Actually, we'll just do better. Right now. <laughs> That's it. I mean, you really don't have to even touch it if you don't want. Great. If you want to, you can just uh, space bar and delete, and then that button. Just Got starts it. it. We'll probably just let it run. Yeah. yeah All right. You want. And I, I'm just in the hall if you need me. Thanks, man. The, does your, does Susan call you guys when he gets here? He'll probably text okay, me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Can do right away. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. All right thanks, dude. Yeah, thanks, man. Course. Yeah, it's just disappointing that we don't you know, yeah, think for sure. that way. You know? I agree. Like, I'm sure they had to work hard to scrounge to find everything, but they did find everything. Right. Like, did the wake-up show do it, all the shit that they did? Which would be my next did. question. You yeah. Know? I mean, because well, that's the be closest good. thing we had, but still doesn't seem like anything right. as close to as hot for the moment, you know? Yeah. More like an afterthought. I mean, I know for damn sure niggas weren't being born on the wake-up show. They were coming through because it was already right. cool, kind of not yeah. like over there. They put a lot of emphasis on the fact that if you weren't on the show, you right. weren't shit. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I believe that, like Buster Rhymes looking like a little sixteen-year-old or whatever. Like, uh -huh. That shit was wild. Yeah. The big. Hi, Barbara. Yeah. Yes, we had. I called her at 9 in the morning and said, what time is lunch? And she, her mom told me that she was going to exchange with Jeremy on this. Her okay, mom cool. told me that she, she was going to lunch with some friends. And she was
How you doing? Good. Do you know where they got these headphones from? Nope. Okay, let me go ask, because we're missing all of our stuff, I think, in our studio. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, if you want to ask Tyler. Uh, where the headphones came from. These headphones? He said all their headphones were missing. I don't know who it was. Yeah, I, I saw who it was. I, okay. Those, those guys are annoying. Yeah. Funny. I, I don't, it's not like I, no one touches anyone's headphones. Right, yeah, of course. <laughs> These ones are all zip tied down so no one can take them, so. Funny. I can't pull these ones out. For sure. Hey, how you doing? Josh. What's up, man? Josh. Good to meet you, Josh. Nice how are you? What's up, Josh? James. Hey, what's up, James? JJJ. There we go. And Eddie. E, e and J. E and J. Exactly. Yo, thanks for coming. Just, yeah, yeah man, this is fresh, right? This is late. No, it's all right. This is all brand new, man. They just... Yeah, we're, yeah, good. we're good. Thanks, bro. Uh... Yeah, we were in uh, we were in the garage until so now we're we're official. This is rad. Step it up. Sorry, I drank way too much coffee this morning, so no okay. worries. I'm, I'm you guys are gonna stuff you through that. Like six of those, so. Is that right? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so are we uh, are we starting? Uh, yeah, let's start it off. Cool. All right. Let's put these no, guys on. I mean, you can if you want to, but they're not. That's you don't have to. Oh, okay, cool. You can just wear so, them. Sure. Yeah, it looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> looks official. Eddie, what's this thing we got here? So. uh... Since I know that James and Justin both are cannabis smokers, I brought out one of my new clients, Vape Exhale. It's a desktop uh, vaporizer machine that does wax and uh, flower. Wow. Kind of state-of-the-art technology. Um, and I also brought out some of my heavy OG, which is my strain, so I could maybe get James to try it out. Justin. Give it a shot. Maybe you too, Josh, if you're interested. No, I don't, I don't do Did that. Did you get the okay to smoke in the studio? No. They said didn't. no? Yeah. Right. But uh, that looks crazy, though. I had no idea that there was... Uh, no, so I don't smoke. I haven't smoked in 20 years or something. Good for but, you. Uh, Good for you. But so, I, so I'm late. You know, I, just the fact that it plugs in... Like that's that's it's keeping me out really right good there. For you too, is it? Yeah, smoking weed is really good for you. Sure, has a lot of great uh, medicinal benefits. See? Okay, check it out, guys. So this is actually my strain. This is you were telling me about this on the phone last week. I think. You ready? This is this is the Gorilla One. Oh. No, I wish it was. We're gonna do that next. This is heavy heavy OG. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that's for you, James. Yeah, it smells nice. Thank you. Yeah, the whole office is lit up. Nice. So what happens if we do smoke? Do they run in here and arrest us, or are you going to get No, I don't out? think so, but I think we get in trouble because of all the equipment and whatever. <laughs> uh, they might ask us. Checking in. Everything cool? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's not be smoking anymore. No, no, we're, we're not. not. Is that cool? We're He's not. just showing it off. Yeah, yeah. good. Good yeah. to show off, but let's not smoke anymore. Okay? We're no not. worries. <laughs> Who's that? See? The guy that doesn't want us to smoke <laughs> in here. Well, I guess we got shut down, so we'll just look at the device. We were about yes, sir. Anyway. Yo, is the, is the, so is the electricity, is that like a common thing? Yeah, yeah, so this thing, it's a vaporizer. So what happens okay. is it's a fully glass, uh, in, it's fully glass inside and it just heats up and then it just vaporizes, it, it doesn't, it doesn't apply any fire. Right? Yeah. It just vaporizes yeah, the weed, it's, it's, so it's much more healthy for you. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. That way you're also not using a flame and you can't do Right, right, right. Okay. 
I should know more considering they're my clients. I think like Dude, more, you know, ath- more athletes use something like at, this. Yeah, instead of burning. Smoke. Is that right? Not as bad for your lungs. It's okay. Nice. And it's a cleaner high, too. Like it is. Like a, if, it if, is. If you, if you tested it, smoking a joint versus like a vape, like it is a cleaner, mellower high. So you know what I told I told the guy that? I'm like, since you dropped this at my house, I've, I've increased my intake by 10 because it, it's not hurting my lungs. It's not, you know, it's kind of good, but it's also kind of bad because now I'm like, right. You know, my creative yeah, yeah. juices are flowing. But <laughs> my feet are up on the table a little bit more than they used to be. For sure. <laughs> but what's funny that you mentioned athletes is the owner of this company also has a company called Canna Athlete. Oh, and really? It's like all about athletes that endorse uh, cannabis because these guys have another company called 420 Games where they smoke and then they run and they do all oh, these crazy sick. things. So I'll get you guys down with that when we do it. We're yeah, doing it here in L.A. Like... Uh, by the Santa Monica Pier in June or I don't know what the date is, but I'll tell you. Oh. Get you guys to come out and compete. Uh, yeah, I'm nice. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's crazy. Smoke some weed and run a run a run a four mile course. <laughs> wow, that does not seem like anything that. <laughs> no, it's real. I it's was not doing when I like, used to smoke. It sounds funny in theory, but it's actually they take it really seriously. Like Ricky Williams is down with it. There's a lot of athletes that are coming out that are uh, for cannabis instead of uh, opiates. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of big business. Nice. Cool. But anyway, Don't. why are we here? We're yeah, here man, we're that. here to, to learn about James Hunt. Thanks for being here, man. I appreciate it. I, I'm not that familiar with uh, your art, and so Eddie put me up on it, and that's why I love doing this with Eddie because he shows me stuff that you know that's new to me. But I love, dude, the stuff you're doing. is You're killing it. Thank you, man. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm uh, happy to be here. So how do you guys know each other? No, Eddie through, uh, I mean, just mutual friends. A lot, of the, letter. a lot of the Seventh Letter guys. Okay. Um, and being not super close with the clip from Seventh Letter. Yeah. Uh, kind of int- introduced him. Uh, yeah, I can't remember how I first got to learn you. Where was it? it? I want, it, was, it was a while back ago, man, because I was, I was pretty young then. So, um, but yeah, Eclipse, I believe, introduced us. Yeah, probably at a show at Known or something. I think so, something like that. And I was immediately fascinated with Homeboy's style, because obviously he's not your normal fucking heavy-handed artist that I'm accustomed to dealing with from the past. But he's also legit, like a motherfucker. So it kind of works, you know. Mm-hmm. I was like, I like that shit. He's got swagger and he's got talent. It's dope. Nice. So we just started trying to do shit together as quickly as we can. Well, what I liked about it, just seeing the stuff online, is like, you know, I think at first it didn't feel like graffiti, like, but then you know, then I see some of the stuff where you're getting up and it's like you're bringing these different elements together in a way that that I have really haven't seen. Right, and I mean, and and. Basically, that comes from like just my history as an artist. Um, you know, being being a teenager doing graffiti. So tell me about the history. How how did you first get started? So um, I mean, as a kid, I, I drew a lot. I like to draw. I mean, I, I I one of the main reasons why I would draw so much is so I would get grounded a lot. And that's how I got <laughs> to do, so. okay. <laughs> so I, that was how I entertained myself. Gr- grounded for what? For getting in fights at school. Okay. Like, just like elementary Just regular stuff, shit. Elementary school stuff, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, so then, I'm, you know, started getting, getting some skill behind, like, my drawings and things like that. And, like, uh-huh. one of my older cousins was like, hey, man, I got to show you something. He, he took me to this, uh, I don't even know where it's at, but I was, like, probably 10 or 11. It was, like, uh, somewhere in El Monte and took me to some yard. And yeah. uh, I saw, like, these big, huge pieces of colorful, like, bombs and characters and things like that. And I was instantly, like, just blown away, and I was like, holy crap, like, how, how can I do this? So it kind of, like, uh, you know, inspired that in, in me. Yeah. And then by the time I was 13, I was, like, still in spray paint and fucking going out, spray painting. You remember you remember the first time you got up? Uh, Yeah, I think it was, like, uh, I was about 13, and uh, it was, like, broad daylight, and my friends and me were just trying to see, like, who was the hardest. Uh-huh. And, just catching tags during the day and like running from security and things like that. But uh, yeah, but I mean, that led to another day like that, you know, we were doing some daytime uh, stuff and then we ended up getting caught by some undercovers. <laughs> First time juvenile hall at 14 and kind of just that kept kept going. I was on ju- in juvenile hall until I was 18 and uh, I, uh, I ended up in high school taking courses in graphic design. Mm. So I started applying like a lot of uh, that that design stuff that I learned, like kind of just like uh, you know, kind of graphic looking imagery, 
I was inspired by a lot of like anime and uh, comic books and things like that as a kid. So I wanted my style to kind of uh, embody like those same kind of characteristics. The very like hard, sharp lines. Mm-hmm. And, uh, just very like, uh, just very like visual, visually impactful, and, and uh, just pieces that I feel would stand out amongst like other artists and things like that. So what was one of the comics that like you followed? Um, like uh, I mean, uh, a lot of the Todd McFarlane stuff. Like, uh-huh. uh, I just like the detail in the artwork and yeah. uh, you know the content was pretty cool and I mean just I mean uh, anime stuff like Akira and like uh, Ninja Scroll and Ghost yeah. Shell things like that um, were also pretty impactful in like my art and style and things like that. Yeah. So I mean so in high school I was like you know I was I was I kind of like teetering like I was like you know in and out of juvenile hall getting fights doing graffiti yeah, but I also know all that. but also. <laughs> I was uh, I was also um, learning all this stuff, the design stuff, where I kind of saw like a light at the end of the tunnel, and then. Uh, we so you were studying design as well. In high school, yeah. Okay. So I mean, there was there was these. So I did two years of like graphic design in high school, and mm. um, so I started like doing t-shirt designs and like getting them printed and uh, and selling them on campus and things like that. And I was like, cool. I like there was like a business behind it. So right after high school, I took some more like courses uh, in Long Beach. To like kind of uh, fine tune my my skill, and then just started freelancing for different companies, different t shirt companies, um, all while still kind of pushing my own uh, style and art by painting live at events and uh, just just painting walls and murals in general. And so was I, there was there a time when you decided like that this was gonna be how you make a living? Yeah, but basically in high school I was like, cool. Uh, I like I mean I printed like about. 50 shirts and sweatshirts and sold mm-hmm. them out like in a week and I was like oh, okay damn I can kind of uh, I can see a future in this yeah and then from there I mean I didn't know what the next step was gonna be so then I started taking uh, classes like on business and graphic design things okay. like that to kind of figure out what what I should do so at that point um, I started freelancing for companies just uh, I was getting approached by certain companies and also just um, kind of just reaching out. But uh, that later led to uh, starting a business with, with my, my business partner, uh, Justin. He, him and I started doing private label selling, uh, like, uh, just just de- designs and T-shirts um, that aren't based around my, my artwork. It's cool. okay. just kind of stuff that the market needs. Yeah. You need a new lease? Nah, it was good. We're good. Um, so uh, we started doing this, this uh, business of, like, uh, producing T-shirts, shipping it. Uh, to these major retailers so then I stopped doing I stopped freelancing and with that like I kind of just began focusing more on just like my art my career as an artist my pushing my name and things like that so Mm -hmm. that's just basically led to this now I'm just kind of doing this for about five six years nice so so you know I mean that's so interesting to go like You know, you're making this art, and then it kind of turns into a business, and then you got to learn the whole business side of it. Right, right, right. And so, like, how is that hard to make that? Uh, it's not like smoke, though, are you? Definitely you're, not. You're supposed to smoke, I believe. Oh, does it? Sorry. Yeah, 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 okay. No, there's no smoke. You have to put that away. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> We're going to keep it. I didn't even smell that stuff. <laughs> it's pretty fragrant. <laughs> Eddie's getting us in trouble. I didn't mean to, guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Interview <laughs> over. <laughs> I mean, there's it's all away, though. There's, there's, like, there's been times, like... There's nothing out. We've definitely been joking where we shouldn't be smoking on projects and stuff. Big yeah. Bear, Big Bear, for instance. Yeah. I think you owe me one. You blame it on me. <laughs> all right, we're good. It's all away. All right, cool. Crazy. Um... <laughs> No, it's all right. <laughs> That's called disruptive marketing. Right? So, yeah, just thinking about, like, how how you make the switch, you know, how do you switch gears from yeah. creative to well, the business side? What was the transition, man? And, like, uh, I mean, it, it, it kind of just like that, like, you know, designing some shirts. I'm, I did in high school to, because I thought it was cool, you know, I wanted to wear some shirts that I was, like, designed, had my friends wear it. But I didn't realize that people were going to be like, dang, I want one, I want one. And then I sold out. And then people were like, hey, when you make more, I want more. So then I was like, cool, there's uh, 
there's something behind it. Yeah. And uh, from there, I was like, cool. You know, it was starting to be kind of more work to like get shirts printed, sell them out of my trunk, and then try to uh, yeah, I'm sure. You know, try to make, keep making it happen. You know, I was like fresh out of high school, so I, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of see what what the next step from there would be, which was selling just art and yeah. designs to t-shirt companies. Yeah. So at that point, it's just you know, I'm designing things on a template. The the company likes it, they purchase it, and I can just continue to do that business. So I stopped printing my own t-shirts and started freelancing. And then later on, get, uh, establishing relationships with different retailers and vendors. And um, I was, uh, you know, we were with the idea uh, spark that, that we should start producing t-shirts, mm -hmm. start this new business where we, where we do private label alongside my uh, career as, a, as an artist. And we've been doing that since. So J Justin is my business partner. Also manages like my uh, art and things like that. Nice. And I think it was seven years. Yeah, seven, seven years. Seven years. The magic number. I think with five on really pushing the haunt brand and just yeah. being you as an artist and designer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And doing nice. the, the private label built the foundation to be able to bring in income, you know, build a business as well as have a platform and you know have marketing dollars to push today as an artist and a designer. Mm hmm. So uh, talk about maybe about how those things work together. And and I, I read online somewhere that uh, that Haunt is like an alter ego. Right. Yeah. So, so I mean, uh, what does that mean? Was, Haunt was my uh, was my graffiti name growing up. So that's what I used to spray paint. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, when for a long time I kept it separate. You know, my design stuff that I was doing, you know, art for for different companies and events and things like that. Yeah. Because I was still doing illegal graffiti, I never put the two together. But then uh, it was like, I mean, it was like right around where we were kind of starting. You know, I got caught spray painting. Well, I wasn't even spray painting. I got caught with some spray paint on me. And I mm -hmm. got uh, got beat up by some undercovers. I pretty much got my ass handed to me. Woke up like on a stretcher and, uh, you know, got ho taken to the hospital and uh, all this. And I'm like, basically like looking at these cops like, man, uh, you know, you guys just beat me up for spray painting. Like, what the hell? They still give me a ticket for possession of vandalism tool. And uh, I went to court, pled mm -hmm. not guilty. Um, then the DA found out that I got beat up. They're like, hey, you want to press charges against these cops? And I was like, I was like, no, because, I mean, I don't want them to make my life a living hell if I'm, like, pursuing some kind of, like, case against them. So I just turned the other cheek. And at, at that point, I was like, you know what? I'm like, uh, you know, I want to focus on my career professionally. Mm -hmm. So then at that point, I kind of just merged, like, my, my name and my graffiti name just started pushing the name James Haunt to pretty much bring the two worlds together and like the stuff that I do did do on the streets and my art or like my uh, design style and outside mm -hmm. of uh, my art putting the two together and and, and just focusing on that as like one big main uh, project yeah so uh, so yeah that was like uh, I mean for me the the main thing that kind of brought that two together was just uh, getting beat up by some cops. So that's kind of, yeah, the, the alter ego thing. And the thing is, because I always want to keep it separate, but then now I'm like, man, these cops whoop my ass. Uh, I'm like, I don't care anymore. Like, I really don't care. And I, I, I still ride on cop cars and, like, uh, do graffiti and things like that. Because... <laughs> okay. Because, uh, because of that, man. I'm like, like, th like, they're not playing fair by the rules. I'm like, it, then uh, I'm not either. Right. right. And if I do ever get arrested, I'm gonna be like, "Yo, hey, put Sergeant Dwight Wald on the phone. That's the guy who like whooped my ass and like choked me out. And this guy's actually like, uh, you know, uh, like a graffiti task force, like okay, guy who national, like, yeah, yeah, nationwide. He like gives seminars to other departments on how to deal with graffiti writers, things like that. But, uh, but yeah, I would just be like, hey, if I get rolled doing something, I'll be like, put this guy on the phone. Does and, he uh, bail you out? Now he better. Now I'm saying it, it hasn't happened yeah, yet. Yeah. <laughs> Good. But he better because I, I would be like, hey, like you owe me one. It's kind of amazing how, if you really think about it, how much money they spend. It's big business fighting graffiti. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Straight up. For sure. And if you look back in history, which I don't know if you guys are too familiar, but when GK got arrested, way back in the day for vandalism, he got more time than the dude that was like two cases before him that committed rape. Wow. I don't know if we've talked about this no. in there yet, but 
So he got a year and a half or two years. So he got a, he got a, a, a decent sentence that none of us would ever want to have to do mm-hmm. for vandalism. And a guy that raped a girl got off on probation. Yeah. And me and Casey did a poster with Shepard, and then we also went to Mark Echo, and he was going to give us a whole bunch of money to like do a campaign against it. Kind of fizzled away, but it's just amazing to me how serious of an offense it is. When in other countries, right. it's just not. Sure. You know? Sure. And I'm sure the, the, the level and the amount is different than in other countries, but it's still just like expression. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Like, how can you, you know? I mean, when I was getting kicked and stomped and punched in my face, I'm just looking at these guys, not, not resisting. I'm like, yo, why are you doing this? I was like, this is really a nonviolent crime, and I'm not resisting. And I, like, I, I just stood there and pretty much got tackled and cuffed and kicked and stomped. And, wow. Uh, you know, homie was standing on my head like a freaking skateboard. Just, I was like, I was like, I, it got to one point where I was like, just started screaming for help. I was like, help, someone help me, because I'm like, these fools are going to fucking kill me. Mm-hmm. If you need a video that you'd be beyond rich at this point. <laughs> Where was your yeah. cell phone? <laughs> Smashed in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, I had a spray can. Oh, and my, the thing was there under covers. At first, I think I'm getting ran up by a freaking gang. I was wearing a red flannel for some reason. But, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm like, damn, am I getting ran up on? And I had a spray can in my waistband. The car, I'm like, okay, it's police. Raise my hand. This fool spears me. And like, I mean, I land so hard, the spray paint burst in my sh- in, inside my shirt and I'm just like filled with paint. Wow. And just getting stomped out after that. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, if something were to ever happen, I'm kind of, I'm just going to ask that favor. Like, hey, dude. <laughs> Pull the card out. Pull the card. So, I, you know, I think it's interesting when, when shit like that happens, obviously it makes you question a, a bunch of things about what you're doing, right? And Absolutely. Kind of, um, and so it's not like, you know, you sort of shifted gears on the business side did it make you question the sort of the mission, like of what you're trying to do as an artist? Yeah, I mean, you know what? It kind of like it just made me realize, like, look, this is still like graffiti. You know, I know guys that really make that their careers. You know, I have friends right. that really like, I mean, do that shit die hard. Um, I personally, you know, I, I wanted to always just pursue. Uh, you know, career in, in just art in general as as a painter, as a, you know, not necessarily just doing graffiti. Graffiti is something that I just grew up doing. It's a part of what uh, my upbringing was like. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it's just still within, like, you still kind of get the itch to, like, do, do catch a tag or, like, d- do something. Um, but, uh, you know, the transition has always been there in my, in my head. I'm like, you know... Not even the transition. It was always like I wanted to still pursue a career in fine art. I still wanted to create paintings to exhibit, you know, around the world. And mm-hmm. Things like that. Beyond just doing graffiti. Just beyond just, getting up. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, I think that was even more important to me than, you know, just catching some tags and things like that. Because when I was riding on the street, I wasn't, riding, I wasn't doing il- much illustrative work. It wasn't mm-hmm. like the stuff that you see. Um, like on my Instagram or things like that, it was just straight tags vandalism. and just vandalism and like just street graffiti. Yeah, I got coffee with Saber Saturday, and we pulled up to this coffee shop in Pasadena, and there's like all these the foam pole, and then those little metal poles that go up like with the wires and shit, and they're all clean. I'm like, damn, I wish I had a streak right now. He looks at me, he's like, how old are you? I'm like, this shit never goes away. It's like, you know, especially when you're in the room with dudes like that, like you just wanna, right? You wanna let it go. Yeah. You know, a couple of drinks and you're trying to climb shit. <laughs> Straight up. You know, you're looking for that permanent spot. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. There's something, there's, there's something therapeutic about it, you know? It's a little destruction. I mean, Saber described it as an, as an addiction, right? right. which I, I, I thought was really... Like, I love the perspective he had on it, which was, like, the combination of, of the chemicals and then the thrill, the adrenaline... You know, of maybe you're gonna get caught, and then the feedback that you get right. from the streets, like folks that appreciate what, what you're you, going through, what you're yeah. doing. Yesterday, I was I was at the house, and I got a text from Oli. Mm. It's a picture of a sticker that I put at IKEA. Like, to me, <laughs> IKEA is like heaven, right? It's like all these fucking people going through this place. Like if you can you stay, oh, for, yeah, you can stay for a minute. You you're you're winning, right? So I hit I hit all I put stickers on all fire extinguishers as my joint. Right, right. I do it in all kinds of places and they stay because nobody's buffing the fire extinguisher right? right and he sends me a picture at the 
food pl- place where you get the Swedish meatballs, and it's a sticker like on the back of the coffee machine because like, like the machine they use. So when uh-huh. you're in the line, you can see it. And he's like, uh-huh. "Is this you?" I'm like, "Yeah, I got that dopamine rush." Right? So, <laughs> How long that one been riding? Uh, two years. Probably. Oh wow! Not, not as long as the it's one like when you go up the escalator. Me and Casey went there for our off our first office, and I put one on the bottom of the escalator. It's been running since IKEA opened forever. Not wow. as long as that one, but it still yeah. felt good to get that like feedback, like you say. Sure. And I'm not even a writer. I'm just a sticker bombing old man. But it still feels <laughs> fucking good Dude. when people are like in in other s- states and they're like, oh, snap, I'm in Philly and I've seen this thing. Yeah. 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 No, it's something about that. Yeah. You know, just getting like that love from your peers. Sometimes even too, you know, I'll, walk, I'll be walking down downtown sometimes and I'll see like either a tag or a sticker and I'm like, I, don't, I can't remember when I did it mm-hmm. or uh, how the fuck I got up there. I'm like kind of tripping on a lot of things like that. But um, I don't know. It's it's, it's just weird. It, graffiti is like that, man. It's like uh, it's pretty much like uh, I was here concept, you know. Yeah. When you did, and you just pretty much uh, put uh, John was here, you know, just because you. Pokemon shit. You're just like you know you're pretty much, yeah. It's like you're pretty much just kind of like leaving your signature places that you visit. Right. It's kind of like that, I guess. Yeah, and your peers recognize it. And it's I don't know. It's just it's mainly for other graffiti writers. Uh, uh, you know, sure. Because I was there. Yeah, and what's the feedback been? I mean, you know, you talk about moving between these different worlds, right? From the streets to clothing business to the fine art gallery world. Like, is it all open arms or or what? How, yeah, how, how is I mean, that? you know what? I, I, excuse me. I mean, I can't really remember if people giving me like. Uh, Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, there are people that are gonna like not necessarily appreciate your shit or whatever. Right. Sure. But um, I don't know. I feel like uh, I've been, you know, I've paid my dues. I've gotten like a, you know, credibility from the from the OGs and and the guys who like kind of that everyone pretty much looks up to. Like, you know, I, I don't know. I think I've I've paid my dues. I, uh, you know, people kind of want to see me do my thing now mm-hmm. and plus on top of that you know it's like people are pretty supportive and receptive on uh the the art and the pieces and things like that so some people are hyped to see what 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 can happen next yeah and the evolution through it because uh you know my style does does change and go through different um transitions throughout throughout the years so i mean just for people to think you know what's going to come next and shit's exciting for some some of my audience but uh is that is that intentional? Do you say like, oh, I'm tired of this style, I'm gonna move on, or does it just sort of happen? It, yeah, you know what, it it becomes, uh, you know, when when it starts getting a little stagnant, you know, I want to start introducing like kind of like new ideas or just test myself on like kind of new techniques. Yeah, uh, you know, push my ability a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You know, my style used to be actually a lot more complicated, a lot more layers and things going on with it. And I had to simplify it a lot more for like that mainstream market, you know. And I, me understanding like to make myself uh, a little bit more marketable, I had to kind of just like, like dumb it down a little bit. And at that point, you know, getting like calls from Red Bull and mm-hmm. uh, Porsche, Porsche, you know, <laughs> different companies that nice that kind of uh, could relate to that stuff. It worked yeah. well with their product and. Uh, but you know, it was still me kind of like, sl- I, like I was like, had a style, and that's me kind of slowing down to like let people kind of get uh, introduced to my art in like a, a chill way. But then you know, as like people start getting more familiar with my art, I'm introducing kind of like the little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, some more, uh, you know, ma- like maybe uh, more of an abstract idea, mm-hmm. you know. And sometimes it's received well. Sometimes people don't get it, and then people are like, "Well, can you just do the girl with the sunglasses?" And I'll, I'll be like, uh, "Yeah, shit, <laughs> <laughs> my money." Yeah, of course. Um, but no, that's I mean, funny. Yeah, well, I think that's interesting because I think you know, as an artist, you know, you probably move a lot faster than than the audience does because Absolutely. you know most people aren't seeing everything you're doing right Absolutely. and you're so in it you know every single day right like you you know you've stared at that painting a thousand times right. and somebody else has maybe seen it the first time right and so you know i think that's a challenge for uh, for everybody creative is to like not not move too fast for your audience mm-hmm. but also 
you gotta move or you're gonna you get stay bored. Excited right? about it. Yeah. yeah. Like that's that's my main thing. Like I like to if I'm gonna walk away from uh from either a design on the computer or a painting at the end of the day, I wanna I want to have the feeling of the need to wake up early to get back on it because that's how hyped I am on it. Yeah. And uh so that's what I try to do and like uh try to push myself with my art to still have that excitement of like accomplishing these pieces and feeling good about um about the work and you know, a lot of times it's kind of, yeah, just, it's like, slowly evolving and t trying new things to, to keep that excitement, to keep that hype in me. So what's your process when you're, when you're not feeling that, when you're feeling stagnant? Like, um, what do you do? I just let it go. I don't force it. I'm just like, cool. I could either just, you know, go. I mean, I, I could do so many other things because, like, my plate's always full. Mm -hmm. but sometimes I would switch out and start doing some design stuff for our t-shirts I made or... Mm -hmm. You know, basically just not not trying to force it, or just go out and like ride, go on a bike ride, or go skate, or mm -hmm. you know just find other outlets, or just leave it alone and and do some research and, and look up some cool documentaries about like freaking telekinesis or some like old Chinese uh, like ancient power shit that I was watching. Is that right? Yesterday. <laughs> what was that? Um, I was like just on on, on a YouTube little thing yesterday, but. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I like watching like these interesting videos of like you know, uh, you know, Shaolin monks doing some some uh, you know uh, extraordinary things with their minds and bodies and mm -hmm. you know different like idea. I'm, like I'm into like you know extraterrestrials and like all that shit. So mm -hmm. so like stuff like that inspi like inspires me and like you know kind of like re rejuvenates like the creativity and like you know I'm watching this and just thinking of ideas even though it's not like directly into my artwork but just like the excitement about it and certain things are just it's just more so feelings and, yeah and it gets me hyped you know so like, you know maybe my approach is a little bit different the next time with uh an illustration or something like that but so are you conscious about that about like what influences to let in and what to keep out yeah i mean basically i've i've uh I, I'm, like it's not that i have a formula but I, like i kind of already know how to execute pieces and imagery in the way that I like I, I like mm -hmm. to but then uh you know I I will just kind of just come up with uh, a new idea I guess and then just test it and just try it out but it's not very direct like um like I like if I'm inspired if I see something I'm not gonna try to reproduce it it's more so like I said just like the feeling of being hyped up. Mm -hmm. like if my if my homie does a keg stand and I'm like <laughs> cheering him on or something, and I'm like that shit's hyping me up, and then lit, and then I'm like cool, then I'm gonna go back to my mural just oh, because like you know I'm hyped on my homie. It's like uh, you know it's adrenaline and like it's those kind of things. And right. you know when I'm seeing something that's inspiring and then later and I kind of just get hyped up and then later it's just like more of just like I just feel good inside and and then I just produce. Yeah. But um, yeah, not not so much direct influence. Like sometimes I'll be like, "Oh shit, man! I mean, maybe I want to draw some water today," mm -hmm. and then just I'll try to illustrate some water, and then later on apply that to like you know splash it over like a girl's body or something, and then see how that looks on top of each other. Maybe maybe today I'm trying to draw some leaves and foliage and put that in the background in the foreground, and it's kind of like you know trying new things, knowing already how like my style is like I. I have a format of executing the way that, that I want to illustrate it. Um, and then just kind of, just, you know, taking the time to see what the end product will look like and, and see if it works and if I like it. And, you know, there are a lot of things that I've drawn, like spent hours and hours and days and days drawing that will never see the light of day mm -hmm. because it's just, I was, I saw it. Okay. I had the idea, did it, wasn't feeling it. So then just turn off the, turn off that layer and, Mm -hmm. move on to the next thing mm -hmm. but um you know I'll, a lot of it's just experimental just having fun i like ultimately end of the day i like to draw i like right. to just chill create like make things that, like it, it excites me um so it's just that it's just like constantly pushing myself trying to try new things and uh just being experimental having fun with it yeah like uh you know i was in spain and and you know i've like I've, i'm staying at this dude's house and it's like this beautiful like mansion from like the 17th century on like right on the beach in san sebastian it's like six stories beautiful home and this guy's like you know i really like your art so can you paint something in my living room but he's like yeah i want you to paint 
a girl with her legs spread open. And I was like, so for me, as an artist, like, you know, I, I want to paint things that, even though as raunchy as that sounds, I still want to make it look eloquent at the end of the thing. So mm -hmm. that's where my, I guess, my main importance is, like, to make it, at the, at the end of the day, make it still look beautiful, have it still be a, a visually impactful piece. And yeah. That, I mean, it's funny you say that because, uh, you know, as I was looking at your, your stuff, like, um, and, uh, you know, a lot of the articles about you, whatever, like, there's definitely a strong sexuality. But, but to me, it feels very, like, um, almost innocent at the same time. Yeah. Like, like I, th I think of this, the, I think of, like, the 80s for some reason. Right, right. Um, yeah, I get compared to, like, a Patrick Nagel, a, yeah. a lot of his work, which, I mean... Yeah. He was an amazing, amazing artist. Was he a big influence on you, or did you, you just sort of ended up in the same place? Yeah, he really oh, wasn't. Yeah. Like I said, it was more like comic books than anime. Right. You know, I would see Patrick Nagel's stuff like when I was, uh, you know, when I was walking down the street and seeing right. salons and shit. I was like, yeah. oh, that's kind of cool. But you know, I was like, it was just some imagery. But I was really into like these like complex stories and ideas. And like I said, you know, back then I used to draw a lot, a lot more shit. Like I was mm -hmm. drawing more animals, more kind of just. Just different, uh, different content. Yeah. And uh, so by the time I'm trying to like market my name as as an artist, you know, I had to dumb it down. So I really focus on eyes, lips, mm -hmm. um, girls, the sunglasses, things like that, because that is what I felt could help me stand out and be more marketable at that point in time in, in my career. Um, and it was something that people can right away be like, hey, I don't know how to necessarily have to sign my name. They're like, oh, that's I, I know that's a Jane Tom piece. For sure. Um, so, like, I, I, uh, I definitely, you know, I definitely do like doing that. I like painting girls for a reason. Like, it's, you know, it's something that I still find sexy. I feel like, uh, you know, it could go from, I mean, I can show my little sisters a painting and they get it. You know, I can mm -hmm. show my grandmother the same painting and she gets it, you know, and mm -hmm. she's not like, oh, mijo, that's nasty. You're like fucking, you know what I mean? Like, right. uh, so that's it. like, I mean, I'm trying to still like, you know, make tasteful imagery, but, you know, it has like this sexual undertone. Having appeal, yeah. I mean, I think it's really interesting because obviously the environment we're in today with not so much art, but with, with media, right, is, you know, you, there's like you know the stuff that you see on on public tv it was like not x-rated but it was it was definitely like r-rated you know 20 years ago right you know what i'm saying and uh and so i think that line keeps moving and and so like what you're doing like i definitely see the sexuality to it but it, it really does feel kind of innocent yeah in the way yeah. that i mean i think you know the way that you know Patrick Nagel's stuff was considered really edgy for its time mm. because they didn't have that right? right but now we have like naked women everywhere the instagram yeah. is like yeah soft porn exactly <laughs> yeah for sure yeah. it really is sometimes i just search titties and see what comes up or pussy you what, know what, what i mean what like, comes up oh shit comes up let's check it out no i'm saying on instagram like yeah. you, you can get lucky every once in a while depending on what time it is and you can catch like a couple couple of good ones before shit gets reported that's right <laughs> that's hilarious but I, I know this when i like I, I i always think about nagel when i think about james sometimes too but when i got my first apartment at westwood first thing i went and bought was a fucking nagel and put it on the wall yeah and had girls come over and they were they, they instantly knew what kind of mood the room was setting sure. when they came in the bedroom and they right. seen the nagel it was like yep yeah and i cook <laughs> i cook a chicken breast and some 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 frozen vegetables and we watched nine and a half weeks oh shit. so if they didn't get the nagel wasn't enough then after wow. nine and a half weeks about halfway through dive that's, in that's what's up so yeah, maybe yeah <laughs> so maybe james is a modern day mood setter and shit, exactly right? there you go there you go <laughs> You come to the house and there's a James Hahn on the wall. You know what's happening. <laughs> there you go. I'm not mad at that. No, I'm not mad at that at all. I, I like that. That's hilarious. Yeah. Now we just need to sell that to a retailer and we're straight. Right. Like Ikea will tell them, you know, all the 19-year-old little boys want to buy this shit. Yeah, I mean, talk about that a little bit because, you know, you mentioned Red Bull and, and uh, Porsche and doing stuff for brands. Like, what you know, how does that work? Like, how do you keep 
it sounds like you have a really strong focus on what you're trying to create as an artist. And then obviously when you're being hired by a brand, they have their needs, right? Yeah. So what do you do? How do you keep those two things in check? So, I mean, and it, it, it all goes back to like, uh, you know, starting my career as like being a hired on freelance artist. You know, I, I learned to work with other clients, you know, see what, finding the middle ground between what I, my abilities and what they're asking for. Yeah. And uh, so I did that, you know, I did designs like, you know, someone wanted a skull, I did a skull for them, or, or, and they wanted it in this specific style, charcoal or whatever. I did, I did that for them. I, mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I can draw the ability to draw in many styles. This is just my specific style that I sure. choose to do. So um, is there certain stuff that you say no to because it's like you don't yeah, want yeah, yeah. your or name like, on that? Or, or I'll say, hey, uh, I know a guy probably could do a better job at this. And yeah. then there's some people who will be like, hey, you know, James, can you... Uh, now it's like I pretty much only take jobs based on like my own artwork. So now like so like say like Porsche, they reached out because they like they like that specific style of work, right? And the the content, the imaging, things like that. So when meeting with a client, you know we can kind of, kind of sit down, discuss the project, mm -hmm. then they have like their uh, you know their inspiration. Like we like these types of colors. We like uh, you know this is our our project, and then. I, I go back, spend a, a week or so designing, kind of, and then we do some back and forth. Mm -hmm. They might be like, "Hey, we like this, but maybe lose that." Cool. And then just at that point, it's like because it is, it's that it's a collaboration. You're working back and forth with their team, yeah. And to find like that middle ground that you know everyone is happy with, and um, from years of doing that through freelancing, I feel like you know it's been. It becomes se it's second nature, you know, and I like I understand the process before I even get into the project. I know other artists who sometimes tend to like get a little bit weary about, you know, their art being like uh, critiqued or changed sure. or moved around. Yeah. But I mean, if you're trying to do business, like that is what what it entails and uh, flexibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta be. Yeah, you gotta be flexible, and you gotta understand that that's part of the job. That's part of what it takes to execute a lot of these projects and especially big companies they have guidelines with their with their of course logos with you know things that their company can and can't do and uh you know so i think that's what has allowed me to also like have a success in that type of uh thing with collaborations because um companies get like know that i get it you know it's not a, a hard process you know justin helps smoothen that a little bit too by just you know helping out, jumping in with logistics and things yeah. like that. So, uh, you know, p what companies have said to us, you know, they're like, you you guys are like the easiest people to work with. Like, we just... That's a I good, mean, that's yeah. a good reputation. Yeah. yeah, so, and that, you know, that spreads and yeah. the next client's like, shit, that was awesome. Let's Josh is definitely no stranger to working between artists and companies and yeah, dealing with the difficulties and disappointments and approvals. I don't yeah. know if you guys know, but Josh had a company called Rebel Organization and ran most of the early Scion art stuff and oh, worked dope. with yeah. everybody that, you know, most of my friends. Yeah, and, I remember and, and when they were more. doing the whole Scion. Well, yeah, Josh project. was responsible for it. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, and I think it's, you know... I probably emailed you. Probably. <laughs> um, I think, you know, for me, it's like you can't, you can't go into it holding your nose. Yeah. Right? Like... It, you know, I think some artists feel like, I mean, every artist is worried about how they're going to make money, right? And, Absolutely. and, you know, we have this idea that, like, you know, we're going to make this stuff in our vision, but it's also going to pay the bills, right? And, and those are sometimes at odds. But, you know, I think the people that create the best products are the ones that are, that it, it really makes sense to them how it all fits together. Yeah. Right. And if and, you know, I've worked with guys who I've had to say, like, don't do this because you don't like it and you're not going to be happy with the outcome. And you can be mad at that money. Yeah. Once it comes in, you know what I yeah. mean? And, and it's something you're putting your name behind, you know, not. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty much uh, gone down in history. Yeah. Like you, it's much more lucrative. For sure. No taking it back. Yeah. No yeah. It's not going to be something that's hidden overseas like that used to be a thing is you could do like the cheesy stuff in Germany or whatever because it. <laughs> Right, because it wouldn't, but now it's going to be on yeah, Instagram. Everything's transparent. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I thought it was interesting that you said, like, you know your style, you know what you do, so you bring that to the table when you come to the project. 
And I think that's probably one of the smartest things, to, smartest ways to look at it. Because a lot of dudes can be really super dope, but like either they're scared or they're protective or they're egotistical and they get in the room and they let all yeah. that shit get in the way of the process. So at the end of the day, like Josh said, that compromises final result. So everybody's not as happy as they could be if you don't go into it without holding your nose. Right. Yeah, and I think that goes on the buyer side too, right? Like, you you know, I always tell you know, the brands, like, you know, you're going to get what you see here, right? Like, don't go, don't go because of somebody's name or because, like, you think somebody's really talented and they can do what you want, even though that's not what's on paper. Mm -hmm. Like, buy what you see yeah. and you're going to be happy with it, exactly. you know? And, uh, otherwise, you're sort of hoping some magic happens yeah. that you haven't seen yet and you're set, setting yourself up to be disappointed. I got a question though, James. Yeah. What do you like as we look around our peer group, right? And Josh too, I guess maybe, and even Justin. I'm wondering when is the craze? When or if will when when will the craze stop where these companies stop coming to all of us and looking for this for this? I look at Mar doing his thing and you're doing your thing. It's like is it is it at its peak or is it only getting better? You know, is it I think at one point it's going to get a little played out. To well, have I mean, like I think art all over, all over everything, it art hasn't on everything. It gotten there a couple times already, and it still keeps coming and going, right? Like yeah. you get what I'm saying. Well, like, because I think art just, you know, by nature, it, it's about reinvention. Absolutely, right? I agree. And yeah, go for it. You know, even before this whole street art or you know mural craze is going on, like you know, art, art's applied everywhere. You know, music, CD right. covers, um, backdrops, storyboarding, music videos. So I think, you know, and, and James being adaptable, I think that as long as you're willing to adapt with where it's going and apply your art in those ways, you know, I think it can go on forever. Yeah. Yeah. I think no matter what, yeah, the, the world is going to need art and artists and designers. Mainly, I think, you know, there was a huge, like, after, like, Exit Through the Gift Shop and shit, there mm -hmm. was a huge, like... Uh, For sure. It's, like, I mean, I think my grandma started catching tags at that point. <laughs> oh, shit. Can we get that? I need mean, Snapchat that shit. Yeah, what did she write? That's what I wanted. That's hard. Nah, I'm gonna, I, I put my grandma on blast. Checking fools. Yeah, you can't, can't let that out. Um, That's hard. Nah, so it was like, man, a lot of cheesy shit came out for a long time, you know, like, and I feel like that was almost something that deaded, like, a lot of that. Right. But then, uh, you know, a lot of things fizzle. No, no matter what, you know, people I feel are gonna be attracted to art and art and large scale, and, um, and like the youth culture behind it. You know, and uh, definitely, I think, um, you know, I think yeah, it's probably gonna go through its waves. But I, you know, I was like for a time, I was like, damn. Now there were stickers everywhere and things like that. Like mm -hmm. uh, right after I exit through the gift shop, mm -hmm. kind of felt like it's super cheesy. Um, so I was like, yeah, I mean. At that point, I was like, "All right, cool. I, I have to work even extra harder to stand out Personal and not and not be falling under that category of right. like uh, these guys are coming out of the out of the woodwork and and now are like probably uh, coming out of the closet too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, and you know, I I just didn't want to fall under that category because at that it was around the time too. It was like, cool. I, you know, I got jumped by those cops and fucking. I was just ready to kind of start focusing on just just." doing kind of more uh, mainstream commercialized work and, yeah. and seeing where that takes me and but I so it was around that same time and I was just like all right fuck you know I gotta really fucking step it up to not be out in that category and the thing is too like throughout the years of just putting in work you know people who know what's up knew what's up they're like oh yeah this guy didn't just come out of nowhere this guy's mm -hmm. been, been here been doing that and then on top of that like you know the work will speak for itself like uh, I didn't just learn how to paint. It's, it's, yeah, you got, right. You got history. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, right after Exit Gift Shop came out, I had a, I think I had had the joint on Pico, mm. and one of my boys from Birmingham brought his girlfriend, his girlfriend's friend and husband, a forty-year-old Jewish girl from the valley that I went to school with, and she's like, "Oh, you're really into art?" And I was like, "Yeah." She goes, "I'm a graffiti artist. I'm talking about a forty-year-old Jewish chick from <laughs> Encino." And I'm nice. like, you are? She's like, yeah, I, I, you got some markers? And I was like, to me, coming from where, I, from where I come from, that's the furthest thing in the fucking world from a truth. Yeah. And I'm just looking, and she really believed it. Like, she was really down, and she, like, started 
she had you know did right. her little letters and, and i was that's when i almost threw up on myself i was like where the <laughs> hell is this thing going like and she's like what why are you i didn't i didn't really sweat her but i kind of was like okay thank you but no thank you you know and she's like well what's your deal and then i kind of I, I, I didn't lay into her but i was like look man like we did this thing for real yeah, yeah. we didn't just see it on tv and go out and think like okay I'll yeah. Win. yeah i go buy some colored pencils trenches. and shit yeah trenches. for sure i'm like no offense but you're not a street artist you're not a graffiti artist and you never will be you, you can be an artist and you can try and emulate this style or you can be be influenced by what people right. are doing i'm like but until you know because when i got in my crew i had to go write my name a thousand times they're like go write a thousand times and come back to me and then we'll talk about it and that's when i got in the chosen few not because i was driving the car and, and right. I happened to go to the right party it was like there was a process you know and you had to earn some shit it was just it so it did it was get like real saturated where like you know it's like when we were kids like everybody we all hit up our notebooks yeah but only some kids went out at night so and hit up freeway. on the streets right yeah. Like I, I never people. did that, so I never thought I was a graffiti artist. Yeah. But I would, I would do get my best on my you notebook, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's, and like, that's, because yeah, that's what everybody did. Show. Yeah, yeah, man. But the, yeah, there's a big difference. Yeah. Back to taking risks, you know. Yeah, for, I mean, for shit, what really right? matters to you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Spending, I mean, spending nights. People are like, uh, you know, it's so glamorized. It's, uh, you know, I like people are like, oh my god. I like after that, you know, everyone wants to be graffiti. Right. Until you fucking get caught. Until yeah, you're of course. In jail and you can't until you, find until you. Dame runs up on you at the wall <laughs> and tells you to get robbed. Then you're like, oh, this is too much for me. Yeah, until you get fucking punched in the face uh, a bunch of times. Like, That's man, right. it's, it's like right. it, it's not a glamorous environment to be in. Like people think, like, man, uh, sure. I, 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 man, I got hit with bats. I got fucking got like woke woken up on on stretchers so many times. Like it was. Like there was a violent vibe. How about getting and, shot at, at and, other yeah. people's and, yards? So, it, in any of those times, did you ever think, like, uh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm done. Maybe I should do something else. I mean, I, well, I still take that risk, you yeah. know. But uh, there was one time where I was like, you know, my dad. I was 16. My dad got a 10 year sentence in prison. So I had two little sisters that like, like, started doing construction on the table to to. Um, help pay for bills and things like that. Mm -hmm. Things kind of started coming into uh, perspective, and I was like, I need to choose right now. Either like, I'm either gonna, I'm still on probation. You know, m my friend just got murdered. I'm like, I'm like, damn, like, are we gonna go just bust on these fools right now? Or like, so there was a lot of things going on, and I was like, either I'm gonna, I think I eat mushrooms, and I decided this, you know, and like, I'm like, I'm either gonna choose this path and like pursue my talent, my skill. And really like, yeah. like go hard and and try to make a difference, or I'm just gonna uh, quit half stepping and uh, grab this gun and go dump on fools like because that's where the the violence and and where I was at in graffiti mm -hmm. it was like that it was like fools were shooting like teens were bringing guns to school and like right. and fools were getting stabbed and shot and yeah all that so uh, so I had to be like either I'm gonna go full force this way full force that way I chose the I chose the light I chose to focus on my art, you know, saw my two little sisters, like, they, they knew that, I was, I was their last hope, so, yeah, um, yeah, what, so that's, and was that, did somebody help you, were you, did you have, like, mentors, nah, or were you figuring it out all on your own, I was kind of just, like, yeah, I was kind of solo, um, yeah. yeah, like I said, uh, but my older brother at the time was, uh, you know, he was, like, took on drugs, so he wasn't really that, uh, mm -hmm. influential, although sure. he was an amazing artist, you know, he had, he, yeah, he went through his, like, chapters, and, um, so, really, I kind of just, I knew all I had was myself. My dad was, just got 10 years in prison, so, um, I was, like, I, that's why I started doing construction. I was yeah. Like, and then I did construction for two years, um, ended up getting a bunch of my tools stolen out of sight, got pissed at the foreman, yelled at him, I was like, fuck you, I was like, I quit, I'm an artist, I'm gonna do art, motherfucker, fuck this. And uh, but I had saved up money to move out. My mom would and my mom could be cool. She's back on her feet. Mm. And uh, so then I moved to Long Beach, started uh, taking more courses in design, and uh, and just started pushing my my art as mm -hmm. as a professional artist and designer. Mm -hmm. See, that goes to the point of like you know s saturation or not saturation. Art for the style of it, or the fun of it, or be out of necessity. It seems, Josh, that we keep getting people in here that art was a necessity, and not just out of income, but out of like passion yeah. and drive and motivation. Like Saber, same thing. Yeah. Kelly, same thing. It's like 
it, that's the one synonymous thing that I'm finding is like it seems like a path that didn't sh- you didn't choose, but it chose you almost. Well, I I don't know if there's any other way. Like maybe we'll get somebody in here that was like uh, completely was, blown out. That was like, yeah, I went, you know, I, I got my MBA and then I decided like art was a better move. <laughs> like, no, I mean, I got listen, I got somebody right now, and I'm not going to say any names, but they definitely have a nice career in art. Yeah, and it was by choice after being successful at doing something else. Well, I'm not saying that that it can't be like you have no other options, but I'm saying like I think you do art because you can't not do art. Yeah, and I would I would say that of you know of any art, right? I was Meaning talking, music or, yeah, I was talking yeah. to some college class recently, and it was a music business class at UCLA, and one of the kids raised his hand. He's like, I'm working this day job, and I'm trying to do my music at night, and it's really hard trying to balance the two. And I said, dude, if you can give up music, give it up today. Just work because life will be easier. The only reason to stick with the music is because you can't give it up because it's going to be that hard, yeah, to get right? It. Yeah, to get it. And, and so you have it. to, like, need it in your life. And, and that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, you could be a lawyer. You could be whatever, right? But, but you have to have that burn yeah. inside you that's only satisfied when you create. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just not going to have to. The drive. Absolutely. I agree with that. And I guess at the end of the day, you see that drive and that burn and that er that desire in the final outcome. Yeah. You know, if you really know art and you really have a passion for art, you can see when it's a cookie cutter or add water or when it really comes. Because <laughs> otherwise you give up too fast. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like a me, I'm a terrible artist. But I I would you know, I'm not an artist, but I draw terribly, right? And and if I had, it doesn't bother me that much. Like, I would love to have a beautiful piece on the wall that I created. That would be cool. But it doesn't bother me that much that the art on my wall was created by somebody else. Yeah, well, you're an artist, just different. Okay. I think but, the art of putting people together and being I'm able not, to see the playing field for what it is. And Fair enough. Maybe that's not my art, right? Yeah. But, but my point is, like, it's, um, it never bothered me enough that I'm like, I got to keep working at this. this. I got to stay up all night and get this right. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, okay, you know, I tried. That sucked. I'm going to do something else. Well, you know what I do is I move shit. I move paintings around my house a lot, and that's my art. That's smart. It has to look right. Yeah. It's got two new sabers, and I'm like, all right, where are these going to go? And they're still sitting there. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm like, you know, moving them around and getting my eye for it. So shit just moves all the time. So you'll come to my house and be shepherd one day over here and, you know. So I guess that's my little way of you have a better collection okay than I do. Being someone, I don't believe that for a second. But that's my that's how it's okay for me to have other people shit around me because then I still feel in control because I can move it. Is that weird? No, makes sense, right? Yeah, I get it. That's I an art. I mean, Hunt, though, dude, house. interior <laughs> interior design my is an art. Coming up soon. No question about yeah. that. Yeah, my birthday's coming up soon. Nice. Um, okay, we're almost running out of time, but I, I want to know uh, about the partnership. Uh, you and Justin and kind of like what makes you guys good partners for each other you know to me you know I know we're talking a lot about art but this is a business right and so how do you think about Uh, that partnership uh, I mean we treat our relationship not only as a business but like uh, you know we're we're like brothers man like uh, you know beyond the office you know like uh, you know some dude's talking shit to me in Seattle and this motherfucker punched him through his fucking uh (laughs) Uh, I just the cab window and like, nice. uh, you know, I, I mean, brother, you right? Know? I mean, one time What's I was up? on acid and I was like fucking tripping out, and Justin came pick me up and watched fucking ridiculousness with me all afternoon. <laughs> so and that commercial, but it's just like it goes beyond. <laughs> yeah, it just goes beyond like the art and everything. It's like friendship is like it's your family. You know, yeah. you, you, we were you look out for each other before we were working together. Yeah. We were yeah. just two dudes. We had worked worked together with another company, became friends, and then one thing led to another, and next thing you know, we're like, damn, we have orders with Chili's, Urban Outfitters, PacSun, and I think we were able to grow it and become successful because we, you know, we put our friendship first, and it was fun for us to do. Yeah, basically, so. it was, yeah, it was fun. It was something we enjoyed to do. We were traveling, we were, uh, you know, meeting uh, other amazing people, and like, uh, it, it was just something that we were still excited about. We still are mm-hmm. excited about. We're like, shit, getting emails. I'm like, oh, damn, that's a, an awesome account. Let's follow up and like make this right. shit happen. And uh, I think we have a good dynamic where um, I can perform, I can execute, and Justin can handle 
um, a lot of the details where it just takes that stress off of my mind. Yeah. And it also helps smoothen the 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 relationship, relationship with with the client. the client and sure. all of that. So and, and that's what I love to do. You know, same as you. Like I yeah. can't pick up a pen or a paintbrush. Well, sometimes I'll do some ghosting. <laughs> you know, like, nice. I'll around. have them wax on, wax off. <laughs> Call it sensei sometimes. That's cool. Um, but you know, I thoroughly enjoy the business side of things. I love yeah. the negotiation. I love putting a deal together. I love executing the logistics on something that doesn't necessarily make sense or you can't just pull off with ease, you know? Right. That's what gets me going in the day. And we've kept it exciting for years, you know, working with rad clients and doing all kinds of cool stuff together. I mean, like, you know, there's not many people in this world that I get to do that stuff with. Yeah. You know, we've, we've gone on crazy trips, gotten fights, killed deals, you know? Sure. Uh, yeah, it's, man, I, lo I love it. Yeah, and I think that's really, uh, you. I think you're speaking to it, right? Is like, you got to do what you love, right? Yeah. If you don't, you know, it's, it's, it's way too much work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, I mean, like I said, when, I, when I'm working on a piece and uh, it's the end of the night, you know, I, I want to get up early mm -hmm. because I'm, that's, how, that's how excited I am about the, the work. You know, mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff, it's not even because there's a client involved or anything. It's just for the sake of producing, of creating it. Uh, having imagery in my head that I can see and make it tangible and like uh, you know and, and that that's exciting to me like yeah the process of creating of executing seeing the finished product like it, it, get, it gets me going every day yeah you said something you know I think it's really common to go from from making art especially you know street art to uh, to clothing Right, and you know, a lot of guys we've had on here have gone the same path, and I think everybody's learned kind of how difficult that is, uh, where it seems really obvious because you need the art for the clothes, mm -hmm. but then now all of a sudden you're in this whole business with distributors and garmentos and, and you, you know distribution deals and done it on our own and investors and financers and yeah, what is it about that? Why is that so difficult? Well, I think, uh, you know, understanding the market, and there are so many different types of markets, you know, yeah. and I think mainly it's just coming up with a proper game plan, knowing, like, who your who your client is and focusing, like, uh, your product for that, you know? Mm. I think a lot of times artists create art or make that transition. They're doing, like, designs and clothes, like, how, for themselves. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, as an artist, you're too forward, or you're, you know, and if right. you're trying to do something for a mass market or something like that, like you have to understand, you have to see what, understand what the people want. And I'm not saying just conform to that, but design toward that. Mm -hmm. Still do your own work, but with with the understanding of like, this is what it's for. Yeah, like Josh said, you're moving faster than the rest of the world. That's pretty <clears> sure. the same thing. Especially clothing, right? Because then, then you got production time and getting into, yeah. you know, yeah, so then, the, so the then, lag. Yeah, of, so then a lot of times... Yeah, yeah. Design. A lot of times, you know, I'm, we're designing a product or some something with another company that doesn't release for another, like, an, a year. Right. Wakeboards right now. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm doing a wakeboard for for this pro wakeboard. Oh, uh, cool. Uh, rider. Yeah, Melissa Marcourt, and she. I mean, su super amazing uh, rider. But she and her, she and I sat down, came up with the design, and I mean, it won't be released for another year. Mm -hmm. But being ahead of the curve and understanding, you know the client and what where the market's going and having like those kinds of uh that kind of approach to to i think designing for apparel for pro different products um uh, you know that it, it'll help you know i think uh help artists be successful at, at apparel or things like that but yeah i think that's where i i feel like i've been able to be successful be successful and then also too like i understand like i want selfies i want my stuff to do well in mm -hmm. stores you know and knowing what what works in what store or what retailer it all the research it helps so you're doing your research do your homework know your product know your market and then execute your work how do you do that is that just going out there and seeing it for yourself or is it talking um, to people no uh, um i mean there's so many i mean from from blogs online from actually just going in the store and, yeah. and looking it and seeing it uh getting a feel for things talking to the buyers 
seeing what's worked for them before, what uh, where they're uh, geared toward doing at the moment, and just just uh, anything, anything. There's there's I mean the internet is is at our fingertips now, and like yeah, even I would research anything, like even just being on 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 Tumblr and looking at certain uh, feeds and seeing what like new styles, new things that are coming out, like. Mm-hmm. It's just, uh, yeah, magazines, like seeing what, uh, you know. What's what, working. What's, what's working. Not. What's. I think one thing that's different with James and his <laughs> philosophy or perspective is like when we first started doing this shit, artists were all emotional about their work and pig-headed about it. Right. Didn't want to conform to what the client wanted. and they, they were super special for even being in the room with them instead of now it's more like it's inclusion versus exclusion. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the key. And I think, you know, I commend you guys for having, I mean, working with them is, has been always super easy because they're a good duo. It, it makes it, it's like when he gets there, I'm happy to see him because I dealt with all the hard shit with Justin, right? <laughs> Instead of like, he gets there, right. I'm kind of like, exactly. damn, fuck, you're here now? Like, yeah. I'm just kidding. It's never, I've never had a bad moment. But it's like back in the day, we were just, people were just pigheaded and emotional yeah. about what they were doing. So it was either their way or no way. And sure. then, like I said before, everyone loses, you know? But if you guys maintain that flexibility and that forward thinking process where it's like, you got to make multiple people happy. You'll, yeah. you'll keep winning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it's important. I mean, it's important to, I mean, if, 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 if it is going to hinder your, your artistic integrity or whatever, it's important just to respectfully decline. Like just <laughs> say, right. Hey, I don't think this is a good look or whatever, me. or I'm yeah. not capable of doing this. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that either. Absolutely. But have you ever, can you remember any jobs that you were just like, there's no way in hell I'm doing this? I mean, usually, yeah, whenever that happens, usually it's kind of just out the window. No, but I'm point. saying, like, but, yeah. specifically, like, can you identify yeah, just I'm one just, thing yeah. that you were like, never will I do that? There's been some apparel gigs or, like, brands that, like, clothing companies that I know. Like who? With you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 I'm uh, trying to I'm stir trying it up think, a little though, bit. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I've gotten approached by like uh, like Monster, but I can't do a That's thing because exactly I'm, I'm doing stuff like Red Bull. You right, know what I mean? Right, right. Sometimes the things are, are conflicts, uh, conflict of interest. Sure. Something, but uh, I mean, usually if I'm like, you know, I've been hit up by clothing brands that I'm like maybe aren't that established or something that I don't feel like it'd be a good look, and I'll just just be like, hey man, I don't think this would work out or whatever. Yeah. But. I, mean, I can't think of anything off the top. I mean, there's so many brands that Dan have Tom been for in and politician and out. over here. There's so many brands like, like logistically. Where it's okay, like, so hey, there's one brand. There's one brand that hit me up one time. It was like a Tilly's brand, and they're like, uh, it's called Fatal. Uh huh. Oh yeah. And it was pretty much a huge rip off of this other brand called uh, Rebel Eight. Oh yeah. It was all Mike Giants artwork. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, man, this, the owner was like, man, dude, I really love your art, and, the, and then the. And they're killing it in Tilly's, which is kind of fucked up because because of uh, Rebel Eight, and right. and uh, you passed. I was just like, yeah, I don't know, man. But I was like, what's up with uh, with Mike Giant and that stuff? He's like, oh, you know, our designer guy. He's like big fan of his, so he's like inspired by. His. I was like, oh, dude, I don't know if that's that cool, man. Yeah, you're like, there's a fine line yeah. between inspired and. Uh, you know, yeah, just duplication. Right. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I guess something like that. Where I just didn't sure. It's all good. You got integrity, that's, man. I like good. to see that. That's why you. That's why we fuck with you because, but you got to have integrity to be in our circle. So well, not all money's most, good money, most right? Most but absolutely. that's a really hard thing I've found as a business owner to to keep, you know, in the forefront of your mind and to live by. We had that conversation. Yeah. Oh, I have, I, have I have another one. I have another Uh-oh. one. I have another one. Yo, um, so Hustler has a Hustler, the the um, oh, publication yeah. has a has like a clothing company yeah. as well, and I mean this is like like six years ago or something, and um, they hit me up. I I like freelanced and sold them some art and stuff like that, some like like just sexy girls and things mm-hmm. like that, and uh, they like I mean the stuff was doing well for them. They pulled me into a meeting one day and they're like, hey, they offered me six figures to be like the art director, and I was. Just like, no. Well, see, keep it clean, though. That goes back to me. Oh, this is dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, grandma wouldn't have been yeah, happy with that. Yeah. She yeah. ran up in the office, you know, sweating everybody. <laughs> That's I remember sitting there because we, we were probably a year and a half, two years into working together, sitting in the meeting, selling them freelance art, and they, like, threw that out there. And I'm just like, 
Like yeah, no, wow. I yeah, thought you right. were counting commission. Yeah, that's what I would have been doing. I would have been nudging them like, let's just do six months and bail. Well, no, on top of that, and they're like, well, and they're, and, and they're like, and you can hire an assistant for like uh, another how how much? Right. Like they were pretty much like, yo, we will we'll pay you whatever you want. Nice. Um, I mean, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, and uh, but it wasn't. But right. it wasn't a good look for me. And, yeah, no and, doubt. Yeah, yeah. So, no, it's, it's you know, great. it could have easily, and at the time, you know, I'm like, shit, you know, like money's tight. You know, I'm like, uh, I was probably like 23, yeah, 24, maybe. Yeah, it's gotta be 24. Um, and, you know, so I'm like, I could have, that, that could have been, you know, big, but it just, I wouldn't have been happy. I wouldn't have been happy. It's not, it wasn't a good look for me. So yeah, I just I was like I I think homie was like wait are you sure are you sure so I was like, designing yeah. loop like, designing loop packaging but... wasn't the 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 road for you. <laughs> no. so, That's great. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I guess yeah. Those are those are two examples. Nice. Yeah, those are good. All right, I got a little lightning round before we uh, <laughs> all right shut it down. Um, uh, what's something you used to believe and then decided that you had been wrong? Uh. It's hard to spring these on people. <laughs> Something I used to believe that they get I, easier. I cool. promise. Something I used to believe that I was I feel that I was wrong, I guess. Um I mean fuck. I don't know. Alright, we can pass. Alright, yeah, let's let's let's, let's get to move on. That's why we We can go it. back to it. I'll think about it. Alright, if you think of something. Um, is there a talent that you always wish you had more of? Um yeah, you know what? I uh, and I say this all the time, you know. I, I uh, you know, I like to draw, I like to illustrate. I, I think I'm fairly good at it, but I would like to still be better. So I still push myself to okay. do that, to be a better painter, be yeah. more uh, well-rounded as as an illustrator. What about if you could choose a different career? Um, I mean, I said break dance. I wish I could do Is that right? a lot more shit now. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, you know, a lot of my friends who were break dancing at the same time as me, you know, we grew up together. These guys travel the world doing like b-boy competitions and things like that yeah so i was thought man it's something that would have kept me in shape still and like things like that that i could still do simultaneously while doing artwork and for sure yeah so stuff like that i don't know i like to play football shit uh-huh. i wish uh, i was a fucking pro <laughs> <laughs> i played fucking all, all through uh my my uh adolescence and oh right on yeah what so what's the next goal what what, what are you still trying to accomplish I would like to, uh, I mean, just to continue to travel uh, and and just you know visit more more places, leave uh, leave art there to, for for uh, you know I, I've been I've been fortunate enough to to travel all through Europe, South America, a little bit of uh, China, nice. was in Morocco, throughout the states, and paint and and do art and um, so I would like to continue that. I would like yeah. to be able to still do that. And then eventually, you know, I would really want to um, start to focus on like more of the fine art stuff and put together like, a, you know, my best body of work mm. and and, and uh, team up with a, uh, a good gallery and and really try to push the fine art side of uh, of all this. Nice. What's your uh, favorite place you've traveled to? Favorite place I've traveled to, um, I have to say, San Sebastian was one of them. Um, it's hard to pick. But uh, between like Morocco, San Sebastian, Berlin, I haven't been to any of those. <laughs> That's dope, though. Yeah, Eddie, what's your favorite spot you've been to? We haven't talked about travel yet. Um, I don't know, Saint Croix, Virgin Islands, because I have a house there that I can just post up at. I think would probably be the place I would go if I had any choice at any moment. But I think Brazil was definitely. Mm. A, a wonderful experience as well. I yeah, enjoyed I love Brazil a lot. I went to Bahia, so I'd like to get up north or down south. South. To, uh, to Rio. To, yeah. Yeah. Nice. I've never been to Brazil, so I need to make sure bomb, there, though. too. So Brazil's bomb. dope. Food, I've been to Rio, bomb. but I haven't been up north yet. Yeah, so, so let's go. and We're we'll, going to trade we'll, notes. We'll, yeah, we'll switch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's super affordable. I yeah. mean, everyone's talking about how much the crime rate was up, and I didn't see any of that. I didn't see Like, they were cool. We heard me. about it, but I didn't see it. Yeah. The only thing that freaked my wife out was, like, after dark, the cabs don't stop at red lights. Because they're, like, <laughs> yeah. they're like, you'll get robbed yeah, no, at no, a red no. light. So they, you just like, they just go down and roll Did you through. go for carnival? 
No, we went for uh, we went in December. Yeah, I went for Carnival. Oh yeah, that's and it. it was it was definitely interesting to see thousands and thousands of people in the street. I'm sure getting messed up. Yeah, and partying. <laughs> it was wild. I want to go back, but I want to do uh, real. Yeah. Uh, do you read books? No, that's, that's a bad quality. Of no, mine. no judgment. Just, it, <laughs> no, it, but I, no did, I did. I did. I used to read a lot. And it was like, uh, I mainly read a lot because uh, I was in our juvenile hall, so I yeah. got hooked on certain books. That when like I got what's out, the, I wanted to, uh, what? but it was like more stuff like, uh, I mean, in juvenile hall, I was like reading like fucking romance novels from like the 1800s and shit. Uh, okay. Well, now it all comes out. That's, that's why <laughs> the beautiful but, uh, Cause like, I didn't have shit else to read. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't like For you sure. had like, I had a huge uh, selection or anything. Yeah, but uh, it's funny. You never, we never know what's going to impact us. <laughs> right, right, right. You know? you know, and then, uh, but then I would like, uh. Like like I said, I was like I always like researching um, like things on on the mind, on the, the human body and ability. So yeah, I would read uh read like more like uh, informative books like that. Like, like uh, what's one? I mean like things like uh, Double Your Brain Power. Um, there was that was one book that was, cool. like, I read over and over again, and it was just like tricks on how to like better your memory and like yeah. things like uh, you know how to uh, like and using like intent and, and uh -huh. to like get things that you want or something nice. like that uh but uh i'm big on like documentaries and things like that because like when i am illustrating or drawing i'll put on like a documentary or podcast on certain things like that like uh you know, like uh coast to coast uh and uh like with george nori and all those things uh -huh. where they talk about like uh like uh just like extraterrestrial stuff, government, conspiracy stuff, things wow. like that. Like those are things that kind of just fuel my imagination. And, sure. Uh, so I like listening to stuff like that while I paint and while I illustrate. Interesting. Do you collect anything? I don't know. No, not really. Not no. intentionally. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, I'm not artists, really collect. Like you, tell me about work. No, I mean, really. I guess not really. What do I collect? Nothing, yeah, evidently nothing, you would nothing. know. I'm not a big collector, no. Yeah, I'm not That's really good. either. I, I used to be. Yeah, I'm like, I mean, shit, I'm, I'm, I was like, I like being like uh, pretty like simple. I don't. Keep it lean. Buy. Yeah, keep it lean. Yeah. Travel light. It's good. Yeah. What, uh, if you had to guess, what movie do you think you've seen the most? Um, I've probably seen, uh, I'd say, like, uh. 2001's A Space Odyssey uh, quite a bit of times. It's, it's, That's definitely when you get lost yeah. in. Yeah, like I know yeah. all the words to like uh, A Clockwork Orange okay. and things like that. But yeah, probably those those, those two. Dope. But, uh, yeah, I'd say those are probably the top two most watched. I've seen. And uh, you have a favorite DJ? Or musician? Favorite, favorite DJ or musician? musician what do you listen to when um, you paint? You know what? Uh, I listen to a lot of things depending if like I'm like in a mellow mood. I listen like more reggae if I'm mm -hmm. like uh, you know feeling a little more hype, some some hip hop, some trap. But um, now I would say like one of my favorite artists uh, of all time would have to be Jacob Miller, which is a, a reggae artist out of uh, Jamaica and uh, died in like the mid '70s at like 27. Mm. He was like touring with his with his band in Brazil, he got in a car accident, but Jacob Miller, man, I mean, wow, he has that's... so many tracks, so many bangers that, like, yeah. I mean, still to this day are just like, so, I mean, still good, great music. Oh, um, very few people ever come here with somebody that I that I don't know. That's a good one. <laughs> he yeah. got you. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> right. I feel like I've heard the name, that's but right. I, but nah, I don't, I don't. I don't know either. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. dope. I gotta go look that you shit do, up. Yeah, yeah, you guys look him up. You guys would be uh, hyped if you guys like reggae music. Yeah, yeah I love man, reggae. Music. I love reggae. I mean, sure. I'm pretty deep in, yeah. in that. So I'm yeah, on Eddie South Boy by Southwest me. cannabis stage. It's gonna be all reggae. Hopefully, Jamaica, the government's gonna sponsor it. We're bringing out so. specialists. It's gonna bring out potentially spiritualists and some other artists. So maybe we'll put you in the budget. Let's do it. Nice. Business is done. <laughs> accident. Not accident. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. Cool. Cool. Well, dude, thanks for coming through, man. Yeah, both both you of you appreciate all the wisdom. Let's get started. Yo, that was James Hunt with some great stories. I hope you enjoyed them. 
Check out more of our Artwork Rebel series at our website, rebelradio.net, or iTunes, search for Rebel Radio. Make sure you find the right one. There's a few Rebel Radios out there, but we're the only one that counts, except for the others that also count. Hey, find us on Twitter or Facebook, and don't forget to check out our new YouTube channel. Search for Rebel Radio, and you'll find videos from some of our episodes. We're adding more and more content all the time, so make sure you check back there. And make sure you come back next week for more Rebel Radio. Peace.